As subduction really kicked into action, the subducting phaleron plate eventually reached depths in the mantle where melting of the surrounding rocks began. From the Jurassic through the Cretaceous, these melted rocks made their way towards the surface, cooling underground, making them plutonic intrusions, and expelling their fluids into the surrounding rock. Many intrusions utilize those old, now reactivated, basement faults. Fluids from these intrusions were responsible for copper, molybdenum, gold, silver, magnesite, and tungsten deposits mined in Nevada. The Robinson, Mineral Ridge, and Premier Magnesia deposits all formed during this time. Not only did ore fluids from these intrusions make ore deposits of their own, but they added iron to the rocks that would be needed to make the future Carlin type gold deposits. The intrusions also created the Sierra Nevada batholith. We will come back to both Carlin type deposits and the Sierra Nevada shortly. During the Cretaceous, Nevada was drastically affected by the severe orogeny. This event added to the complexity of Nevada's geology, shortening Nevada 22 to 45 miles. During the severe orogeny, Paleozoic rocks were carried from the west to the east and pushed up and over the top of the Jurassic-aged sandstones mentioned previously. One exposure of this thrust fault is located in the Spring Mountains and is referred to as the Keystone Thrust. The Keystone Thrust is one of the best exposed thrust faults in the western United States. 